everyone, welcome to this week's episode. And on the show today, I have our two-time Commonwealth Games winner, Lyndon Victor. Lyndon is going to chat with me about the grueling task of competing in the decathlon event. You know as well as I know, it's a lot for an athlete to compete in that specific event. I'm going to chat with Lyndon about his preparations, about how he feels about representing Grenada, and why he's so proud all the great comments and feedback he has been receiving. Here's my conversation with Lyndon Victor right now. Enjoy. Hey y'all, this is Onika coming to you from the Signature Theater, last night, closing night of Black No More, and you are looking at Let's Have TV! TV. Welcome back to this week's episode on Lexan TV. You know, I have been showcasing lots of interesting and talented individuals, and I kind of have a thing for our athletes because, you know, I remember making a post recently after my next guest who you can probably see right now on the screen won his second Commonwealth game title. Let me tell you, the cat lead, Lyndon Victor. Lyndon, I remember I, as a little girl growing up, I used to admire a lot of the international athletes. And here we are today. You know, we got our own decathlete and I'm so proud and I'm so honored to have you on like Sand TV. Warm welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> of course, I could have said a million things, but, you know, we have a lot to talk about. Um, and I really want us to get down to business, so to speak. You rarely see athletes from Grenada, let alone the Caribbean, representing uh, in this specific, you know, event. It's strenuous. It takes a lot. Um, it's like an Ironman athlete of all athletes, you know, that kind of thing. What would you say motivated you to follow this specific path? Um, I think, first of all, the, the school system in Grenada, um, it's, it's ideal for the athletes in yeah. terms of we are allowed to participate in a lot of different events, whether it be for heats to score points for your your um your house you know so i was introduced to all the events very early like i remember seeing kirani cho javelin and long jump and cho discus in pss you know so i think i think the call in grenada it's it's there to produce really good tech athletes and um watching athletes like joel philip and my brother do the heptathlon you know it kind of inspired me to to broaden my horizon, so to speak, and try all the events at one. And um, when I when I got into it, I didn't get into it to be an Olympian or to be a two-time Commonwealth Games champion. I just I just did it well first to get an education, and well, it took me places that I didn't think it was going to take me. So I'm very grateful for that. Excellent. I have a little secret to tell you, and I think a lot of folks are going to be like. I'm happy that you said the school, the, the system in Grenada, especially the secondary school, allow you to explore various events. Um, I know you know Ms. Vida Bruno Victor very well. She very can vouch well. for me. Um, as a past student way back at Lincoln High School, I also did track and field. So I did more sprints. So I did the 100 meters. I was prep champ and all of that. And I did dabble a little bit in the long jump hurdles and what was the other thing i can't remember but let me tell you there's no way <laughs> there's no way i was doing a shortcut a short short put sorry and discussing all of that but it really allowed you to be so well-rounded and you got the opportunity to try you know you try it and if you 
you know, if you really weren't, weren't cut out for it, then you weren't, you know? But it was truly a very exciting time in my school life, you know, experience yeah, in that. I, I think we're very fortunate you know, to be able to do that because in um, certain states in the U.S., like, they don't allow you to, to throw a javelin. And, um, you know, athletes, they specify at a young age, you know, like I'm a sprinter and that's what I'm doing. But like in Grenada, we do it for for pride, you know, we do it for house pride. And I think that's, that's right. when it's fun. You're able to explore to see how good you can be in um in various events, whether it be javelin or the, the sprints. Because I remember for a long time, Anson thought he was a sprinter, you know. And now he's the <laughs> champion in the javelin. So it just yeah. it gives us the opportunity to explore and to, to dabble into different things to see, you know, what we can be good at, uh, what we can be great at in some some aspects. I am always in awe by the performances of athletes because again, it's it's so tough, you know, that you have to do so much. Um what would you say for you when you're competing? You know, you got to have that mental strength. When your body is saying, I can't go anymore. What, wh where do you get that mental capacity and the strength to just pull through and to just keep going despite the lactic acid, despite everything that's going on in your muscles and, and, and twitching and everything? Where do you get it from? Well, um, very is I feel like different meats require different mental toughness. Um, yeah. well, I train hard, so it makes, makes the competition a bit easier. You know, I feel like I train harder than, training is a bit harder than the competition is, makes the competition yeah. easier. You know, sometimes I dig down in my faith in God, you know, and I, like sometimes me and MB having conversations, like you got to come through for me when I feel like giving up, you know? Like when nothing is like it's going right, so I've had these competitions. Um, <laughs> funny story. I remember my, I remember working in the garden with my dad, and he used to tell me like black men can't get tired. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes I think along those lines. You know, whatever motivates me to to um, to to get the job done. <laughs> it's funny that he we'd be in the garden from like six to six, and I'm like I'm tired, or like. I would say that I'm weak, and he's like, "That's seven days," <laughs> wow. you know, or like little yeah. things like that. But whatever gets the mind stimulated to to be able to compete at a high level. Yeah, indeed, and I think it it prepares you. You see, a lot of the things that we do as as let's say as young people growing up uh, within the home circle, and you you have your chores, you have your responsibilities. Yeah. You know, these are the things. It's it's not just about going all day in the world or school or it starts from home, you know? And and, and that the mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Like Yeah, I'm happy that you mentioned that. I'm happy that you mentioned that. So let's talk about the recent win. Uh second one, the toughest event, of course. <laughs> ah, the Commonwealth. We were so ecstatic here on the island, you know jumping and screaming and shouting and keeping in the loop. What would you say? And I think I know this one pretty well, but let's talk about the toughest event for you. <laughs> the toughest, the toughest, the toughest, the one that you wish, oh my goodness, I I don't want to do this one, but I'll do the others. Which one is it? <laughs> well, everybody thinks 100, right? Um, yep. <laughs> oh man the toughest event right everybody just automatically think i would say the 1500 but yeah it's the 1500 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know so, i mean it, 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 it it's it's the last event on the second day you're you're like words cannot exp explain how fatigue you are going into that event and um the way that i'm built i'm built a more of a powerful athlete so i'm built more for the throwing and explosive events and the 1500 has never the the thing is about 
about the decathlon that people need to understand is that I need to be able to throw far. I need to be able to run fast and I need to be able to run long. So like I need to have a certain body type, you know, in, to be able to do that and to maximize the events that I'm good in. So if I, if I lose 10 pounds to run faster in the 1500, chances are I might not throw as far, you know? So there's, there's a lot of things that goes into the decathlon. Yeah. So I think yeah. uh, to maximize my events, I have to, that I have to maintain my weight, but the fifteen hundred suffers because of that. So yeah. I would say the fifteen hundred is one Ooh. of the toughest. And that's wow. the last event. <laughs> but you always pull through. Yeah. And that's something. <laughs> I overheard you uh speaking about your idol in a in a past interview that you did. And I know that your idol is your brother. Yeah, yeah, Kurt, who I also had the opportunity of interviewing years ago. Um, what an amazing individual and 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 gentleman, young man he is. What was it like uh, competing with him this time around? This recently wrapped up Commonwealth Games. You know what was it? I know there were lots of fun moments between both of you. How competitive does it get? Does he push you? Does he ease up a little for you? Does he tell you, come and get me? Or you would tell him, you come and get me? What is it like competing with him? I mean, it's fun. And for me, I was, it was just happy seeing my brother compete again. You know, he's been he's been missed on international stage for a while. So for me, it was just happy just going to be back on the, um, on the big stage competing. And um, we're really competitive. People don't know this, but we're, we're really competitive, like, the times we're in the meet, and you can tell there's a bit of friction, but um, most of the times we just be talking about like oil dung and what we want to eat and what we're gonna eat after. <laughs> We've been talking the most weirdest stuff, man. Do you want pig tail in your oil dung, or do you prefer pig out? <laughs> like that's what we were talking about the whole meet. Yeah. So wow. um, it's always fun getting being able to compete with him. It's like relaxes you a bit but you know at the end of the day we both we both want to win and you can tell that we both want to win how long are you gonna go again for it because i know the olympic games is around the corner we think it's a far way off but it's it's right there you got your eyes on the prize yeah i mean no as long as the good lord gives me health and strength to be able to compete like I'll go as long yeah. as my body. Still twenty nine, so I'm not not old. So um, just as long as I have health and strength, you know, and um, and I'm and I'm enjoying it, then I I I'll go as as long as I'm enjoying it, definitely. Yeah, and that's the most important thing. This this entire experience from the beginning to now, where you you know where you've been, what you've accomplished and what you are yet to accomplish, uh, getting to travel the world, meeting other individuals as incredibly talented in this specific event as yourself. What has it all taught you as a person, as an individual? That's a great question. Nobody has ever asked me that question. That's, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I think the biggest thing that is is taught me, believe it or not, is that some way or the other, God has always been by my side. Wow. It like it's crazy. Like every step that I took was a step that was ordered. You know, from the very first day that I got accepted. So this is a funny story, and I don't want to tell too much story because we don't have a lot of time, but. <laughs> I was being recruited. When I was being I'm recruited to come to the, I had zero offers for scholarships. Zero offers. It was a Wednesday night. My mother came from prayer meeting and she was like, "I just prayed for you to get a scholarship." That very night, the school messaged me and she was like, "Linda, I want you, and we're going to give you a scholarship." So I wow. so. That very night, I just feel like everything has just been in place. 
to, you know, to bring me where I am today and to where I'm going to be. And I never take these things, like I, I never take the opportunity to compete for granted. I never take, you know, doing my job for granted because, like I said, I had zero scholarship offers from the smallest schools. Like I, I message every school in the U.S. And then I got one opportunity. So I, I don't I don't take these things for granted. And so to answer your question, to, mm. the biggest thing that I've learned is to be grateful yes. for every Yes. Because just yes, as indeed. as easy as I'm here now, I could have easily not been here. So I think I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned. That's amazing. That is amazing. And you know, that in itself is a perfect segue because I also wanted to ask, I'm so glad you answered that the way you did, you know, from the heart. Um, because I really also wanted to ask you, you know, what would you like to say to persons, you know, who said yes to you when some other door was being closed and you just spoke about it really in a nutshell you really just said listen i had zero opportunities and then then it happened that moment it happened so what would you like to say to folks who have really been there for you you know your home circle uh coaches um anyone and everyone who's actually believed in you linda what would you like to say to them well, you know, the list is long. The list is long. Um, I just just want to thank you. Like my sisters, they don't like they don't miss an event. Like they, she follows every event day to day. Like even my my um my coach in Grenada, Paul Phillip. He, I mean. Yeah. He made me believe that I could do things that I didn't even know I could do. Like we spent hours on the track. And I like, you know, like my dad who instilled hard work in me, you know, my mom who sacrificed so much so that I can just get a high school education, you know, like these people, I know if I win or lose that they have my back no matter what, like, and wh whenever I get to compete, you know, it's, it's for these people that have always believed in me. And it makes competing easier knowing that at the end of the day that, you know, Grenadians are going to, they're still going to be so supportive, like even if I win or if I lose, you know? So, yeah, yeah I just want to wow. thank you for, and the thing is, I see the posts, I see the messages, I read the comments, and I'm like, wow, like, y'all Grenadians ain't easy, you know? Like, yo, <laughs> they, 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 they're there though whole way following every event yeah. like calling me iron man i'm like i just adopted an iron man name all of a sudden you know because they appreciate what i'm you know they really appreciate what they're doing and what i'm doing because they they know that it's it's the decathlon and stuff and i and i and i appreciate their appreciation for the event because you know yeah. it's, it's it's not easy doing the decathlon but you know I feel like the public makes it worthwhile. That's that's the nice. best way to put it. Indeed. Like I like I tell you, I am still beaming with pride just remembering, listen, I grew up following the Olympic Games. And I'm talking about when I was like 10 years old, you know? And um, I think the best feeling ever is knowing that we have our athletes representing us in the biggest way possible, winning titles, winning trophies, winning medals, you know, it, it it's just little dot on the map. You know, I always say we're a little dot on the map, but guess what? People are knowing about us now. We never knew about us, they know about us. And this is all because of people, uh, the great athletes that we now have. You know, and I really want to say kudos also to to those who were there before, 
because they were yeah. the foundation, the pioneers, you know, the Aline Francis, the Bunny Wilson with Boxing, the Mike DeCall, the Isa Simpson, you know, and it's it's so important to keep growing. And it's what man, what a moment to be Grenadian, you know? I share the same sentiments that you do. It it is it is first of all, what what we're doing in sports we're not supposed to be doing. Coming from a population of 110,000 people like you have yeah. the Olympic champion the world Commonwealth Games champion it's it's unbelievable it should not be happening but I think I think what's happening is that the mindset of the athletes are changing because of the right. the people that came before us and I and I and I think that athletes are believing that it's possible like they're believing that Okay, I can come from La Femme St. David and be top five in the world. I can come from St. Andrews or Guava and be number one in the world. And I think that's where it starts. Like just seeing what Fran Ali and Francique have done and the Randy Lewis have done, and like you actually start believing. And I and I think the coaches are believing that they can coach athletes to be good, and that makes a difference. I think the mindset of Grenadians are, 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 are changing because before you, you might see a Grenadian go to a meet and he might be in a shell. That's not so anymore. Like, no. Trian out there with a swag. Anderson is walking out there with a swag with the belief yes. that we're the best in the world. And I, you know, like, we're not in a shell. We ha we're from a small island, but we, we're competitive and we know how to work hard you know, and we know how to get the job done. So I think, yeah, it's amazing. And I, and I just think that we're only scratching the surface because I next 10 years, I don't know, I think our, our, we can be really, really a force to reckon with in sports, not just track and field. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Can you imagine the young men and women coming up after you and Karani and Anderson? I mean, just think about it. You just mentioned it. And keep inspiring. Yeah. Keep inspiring. It, you inspire one young man or young woman, yeah. and that alone goes a long way. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? Well, this is I'll we're always we're always we're always out of time. But is there anything else you'd like to add regarding uh, what's up next for you? What is happening next for you? Well, um, yeah, I leave on Tuesday for a meet in France. Um, uh, my last, my last decathlon of the year. I, I'm hoping. I feel like I'm in really good shape. You know, I feel like I'm in better shape than I was at the World Championships and Commonwealth Games. So, you know, I'm gonna go out there and have some fun and compete well. And I like to win this one. So we'll see. Et il peut. Allez. Et voilà! Ah, il, est venu, il est venu à Talence, il savait pourquoi il venait à Talence. Hey, 65 sur ce G, un peu plus. Okay. 64-26! Aïe aïe aïe, magnifique! 64-26. Lyndon Victor, yeah, 80 aujourd'hui. You wanted to keep that uh, nightclub atmosphere okay, with the crowd, no? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, just hearing my country music play all the way in France makes me so happy. Today, 490, 480, you're on the pace for what you were seeking here. Yeah, um, we're just taking it event by event, and it's not going too bad, it's not going great. But I'm happy. 8,550 points. Wow, 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 wow. You had to put a great 1,500. How are you? You know, like I said, after the 400, we've been putting in a lot of work. And 
I always say God rewards hard work and you can't cheat the work. And I, I put in the work and I got the results. And then I want to say thank you again. I appreciate everything that you and all the other athletes, national athletes, international athletes, Canadian athletes are doing for us, for our country. And just for just for our soul, you know, just to feel good and to feel proud. You yeah. know, there's so many, so many bad and dark, and you know, we we wanna we wanna put the the good and the light and the upliftment, yeah. you know, out there. And we have so, that in you. Someone said it. to me, right? And they asked me, How do I feel when I win? I was like, ah, I feel okay, but he was like, but you don't know how you make me feel when you win. And I was like, I never thought of that. How do you feel when I win? And that's something that, that stayed with me. I'm like, you're right. I never thought of it because I was just thinking about how I feel when I win. But yeah. there are people who feel even more sense of pride when I win than I do. Like they're the ones that win. So absolutely. It's Thank for you all guys. Of us. And we want to say thank you again, and you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks. All the best with your upcoming event, and all the best with anything and everything that you get involved in from now thank on. You. Keep shining, keep shining, and thank you so much for joining thank me you. on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Lennon. Take care. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Kirani James, and you're watching Lexan TV, where it's all about life. that's my conversation for this week uh, featuring Lyndon Victor two-time Commonwealth Games winner man Lyndon is such an awesome guy such a big heart I just want to say thank you to Lyndon and all the athletes who go out there prepare work hard to represent our tri-island state and the international games we're doing with big time big time congratulations again to them Let's keep supporting them through thick and thin. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned and don't forget to follow the page. Send me a comment today and do keep updated by hitting the notification button. Hit that notification button so you don't miss a thing. That's all for this week's show. Thank you so much again and thank you for tuning in and watching right here on TV where it's all about life. Take good care of a great week ahead.